So one of the tools available to us when configuring a Cisco device is a script that they have called Cisco Auto Secure. Now, I'm on a brand new router and we just booted the thing up. I don't want to go into the configuration dialog box. So right here I'm going to say no and this is going to give me uh, put me at my user exec mode. Now I want to run the auto secure script to set some initial security settings and then we'll talk about some strengths and weaknesses of it. So I'm going to go to privileged exec mode, so EN, and then the command is auto space secure. And this is a script that we run from here in privileged exec mode rather than from global config mode. Uh, auto secure will configuration will configure the router. Okay. Um, handful of questions that we're going to walk through. So the first one, is this router configured to the internet? Now if I say yes, it's going to take me through setting an internet IP address and then a, or an outside interface and an inside interface and IP addresses and a lot of stuff that we're actually going to deal with later on, but we're not going to deal with it right now. So I'm going to leave it as no and we're just going to use this as an internal. So the next thing it's going to have us do is set our login script. Now notice right here, I'm going to scroll up because I want you to see a bunch of the stuff that it just did here. So we're securing management plan services. So we disabled the finger service, the pad service, UDP and TCP small services. We enabled password encryption, TCP keep alive in and out. We disabled CDP, disabled boot P, HTTP, the finger service, the source routing, and the gratuitous ARP. So there's a bunch of things that it shut down for us and then a few that it enabled for us. And all of that happens automatically as part of this auto secure uh, function. So now we need to set a login banner. So I'm going to use quotation marks, authorized access only. And just like if I'm doing this manually, uh, I need to start and stop with the same character. All other access is prohibited. And then because I started off with a quotation mark right here, I'm going to end with a quotation mark right here. And that will give me my banner. All right, um, let me rerun that again because I hit enter at the wrong spot. There we go. Let's try this again. Authorized access only. All other access is prohibited. There we go. Now it's going to ask me to set an enable secret password. And this is the higher level of encryption on the uh, privileged exec mode. So I'm going to set my default password. Now here's one thing that it does that I don't like. And that is it also wants to do a standard enable password. Now if I try to do the same thing, it's going to say, yeah, I can't do that. So I'm going to have to pick a different one. So it's also going to ask me to establish a local user database. This is something we did when we were, uh, we do when we're setting up SSH, but we can also use it for local logins as well. So I'm going to set up a local user database. We're going to create a username to admin and a password of Cisco because you know we're keeping it nice and light. All right, blocking period when a login attack is detected. So I want to block for 60 seconds. Maximum login failures with the device. We're going to allow maximum of three fail logins within, let's say, a 10 minute period. And then it's also going to give us the option to configure SSH. Now I'm going to skip that because we're covering SSH somewhere else. In fact, most of the things that we do, we're going to cover somewhere else. But I do want to show you what this does when it gets to the end. So we're not going to configure a firewall at the moment. And then do we want to enable TCP intercept? Now, as we do this, notice right up here, it's going to tell us what this is. So TCP internet or intercept is used to prevent the TCP uh, SYN attack. So yeah, we want to enable that. So we're going to turn that on. And then this shows us what our, oops, what our config is going to look like. So this is the configuration. Enabling service password encryption, no CDP run. We're setting an access list to allow boot PC, we're setting an author or an MOTD banner, passwords, username, we're setting up the uh, AAA authentication using login local, we're using that for our console and our VTY lines, we're setting up some logging. All right, when we're happy with that, 
we're going to type yes and that's going to save to our running config so if I type show run we're going to see all of that configuration now there's a couple of things this does that I don't like one primarily and that is this right well two primarily this one right here it says my username but notice that this is a lower level of encryption it's using the password keyword not the secret keyword and I'd rather use the secret keyword for my user accounts the other thing is it's setting an enabled password now it's not going to use that because the secret is in it, is activated but I'd rather it not even do that so those are just a couple of things however it does do a bunch of other things that is really useful like shutting down CDP shutting down the IP HTTP server turning off a bunch of those small uh, services of finger services so there's a bunch of stuff that it does that is really useful so while it's not perfect auto secure does do some things that I think are great and you can do them all manually I mean everything it just did for us automatically we can also do manually but auto secure does them for us automatically now there are some areas that I would like to c come through and clean up here's another one by the way notice right here it set my authentication uh, using that local authentication AAA model on VTY line 0 through 4. It did not do it on lines 5 through 15. So that's something I'd want to extend as well. But um, it is a useful tool even though it's not perfect. Now, as to whether you want to use it or not, that depends entirely on... If you want to, if you're worried about some of those other security settings, or if there are features like CDP that you actually want to keep active, in that case, if you do the auto secure, you're going to have to turn those services back on. Um, so it just depends on what you're wanting to do, but it is a tool that I did want you to be familiar with. So there it is, Cisco Auto Secure.